Hi everyone! My name is Megan and I'm coming to you from Washington State. I am a stitcher. I cross stitch and I knit and I just want to share that journey with you. So you are welcome here, all of you. So like I said, it's Washington State. I have the day off from work and I decided why not? I just put my four-year-old down for a nap. I'm just gonna hop right in, you know? It's nap time. I only have so many minutes worth of nap time, so we gotta stuff it all in. <laughs> I'm probably going to start with cross stitch today. Sorry if I go out of frame, I do have to bend over to pick up my cross stitching supplies. I should have probably brought a table over, but I didn't feel like doing that. I just felt like committing and getting this done for I don't know, I've thought about doing this for so long, so I'm just kinda hopping right in. So like I said, sorry for getting in and out of frame. Hopefully it's not too bad. So for starters, um, I'm just gonna go over the bags. These are just really cheapy bags that I buy off of Amazon. I think you can get like a dozen or maybe two dozen of them for like 20 bucks on Amazon. They are amazing. Um, sorry about the zipping sounds. I know some people hate that sound. It doesn't bother me. Usually I'm one of those people that sounds bother me. Like if I can hear the spit in someone's mouth while they're talking. Oh, done. We'll never watch that again. <laughs> but um, essentially, sorry about that. <laughs> So these bags are awesome though. I bought some when I very first started cross stitching, which I just started December of last year. So it is now, let's see, we're March, it's March 29th and I started on December 24th. So just a couple months worth of stitching and I dove all in. I absolutely am obsessed, I love it. And this is one of the projects, one of my whips that I'm working on now. It's the Stitchy Box Sampler and this is Sarah Moon 1791 Sampler. I got her at uh, Thread and Thread Needle Street in Issaquah, Washington. Here's the pattern. I'm hoping you guys can see that. I'm not sure. I don't have something where I can see what's, you know, what I look like. I just, I'm just going for it. So I love this sampler. I loved all the colors. I really wanted to stitch it in the silks, but um, she ended up not really having all the silks that were needed or the way that she had cut them was five yard increments and she said that it would just be hard to figure out how much I would need. And it is over an hour drive for me. It's like an hour and 15 minute drive. So it just ended up being where the DMCs made the most sense. She had all of them in the shop. And so I went for the DMCs. Here they are. And after I had picked up all these DMCs from her shop, I actually realized that, I think it's Joann's. Joann's was having a 24, um, like a 24 hour run of their sale, or maybe it was two days. I think it was that whole weekend, but they had a sale on their, their DMC floss. So I went and I just bought a double of every color. And then I also bought a couple of their, I don't know what they call them. I don't know if they consider them like specialties, but they have a few that are more like um, muddled colors, like they're variegated. And so I picked up some of those as well, just in case, um, you know, just in case I decided to switch things up, but I really like this so far. And here is how that is looking. Hopefully you can see it well enough. So I'm working on this, um, I would call this a tulip down here, maybe it's roses though, but I'm working on this motif down here right now. And yeah, I just love it. I'm stitching it on 28 count linen, and this is the colorway amber. I purchased this at the needle stitch. I think it's, no, thread and needle shop. <laughs> the same place in Issaquah there. So I really like it. Um, this is a fat quarter, I believe. But yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. It's stitching up really nicely. Um, I'm doing two over two on 28 count. And then the other things I changed were for the DMC. I've heard that the anchor floss shows up a little bit nicer. So I decided to go ahead and just purchase a bobbin of the anchor in black because I've heard, like I said, stitches up nicer than the black 310 from DMC. And then also I found these cute little bags on Amazon and then it says, lifestyle, what sunshine is to flowers, smiles are to humanity. And everyone who knows me says that I'm just super smiley and happy all the time. That's one of my qualities. <laughs> and so I picked these up, it came in a four pack and that works great for me. This fits my needles, my extra bobbins, like each little thing. And it doesn't take up a ton of space inside of my little, zip here so i really like that it's working great i love the way it's stitching up i'm like obsessed with it right now i just i almost didn't want to make this video because i just wanted to keep stitching <laughs> on it 
And my next whip, again, in another Amazon bag, is Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow. Hopefully this is not too glary. I know I have a window right in front of me. I really love this piece. I actually, though, made a huge mistake. I picked up the wrong color. Um, I picked the color tangerine on accident for the moon, and I had to restitch this completely. So I started in this corner to begin with, and I got a good portion of the, uh, the first square done. I got two ghosts, I got the house, and one of the bats, and I actually had stitched that moon in the wrong color twice. I stitched it twice in the wrong color. And then the second time I went to cut all the threads out, I actually ended up cutting one of the threads of linen and I completely ruined that corner. And I didn't have any interfacing, otherwise I would've just uh, interfaced the back and kept on stitching. So what I decided was, you know, I'll just restart it. I have enough floss and I have more than enough fabric. This is a 40 count, I think it's Newcastle's Mocha, Country Mocha. And yeah, I really like it. It's a 40 count. So that was my first 40 count project and I love it, but it is a lot harder on my eyes and I already have bad eyesight. So it's a little tricky. I'll probably pull it out when I feel like it kind of thing. Um, probably like when I get tired of stitching on the Sarah Moon one. And I did actually do a ring for this one and I did do all the Flossway bags. These are actually the Hobby Lobby brand. I don't support Hobby Lobby. I just don't, I'm not gonna get into it, but I had a gift card. So I went and I used the gift card that I had um, sitting in my wallet. So that's what I did. And all that fits in here. So it's a ton of colors, a very large pattern. This is a big piece. It stitches up to be quite large, but I really do love it. And this is carriage house samplings, um, Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow. Pretty sure I said that, but just in case. And then my last whip is actually the whip that I very first began cross-stitching. So my first project that I ever started was Long Dog Samplers Pandemic. Let me just get the front paper. And you all have probably seen this one. I love it. It's Setting. I do, I, again, every time I look at these, I'm like, oh, I want to pull them out. The only one I don't actually feel that way about is the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, which is interesting because when I first picked it up to start it um, as a start, I was like, oh, I can't wait. So excited. I think because I cut that linen thread, I'm just disheartened with it right now. Like she's making me angry, so I don't feel like working on her. But this one I'm stitching in all DMC as well. This is the color 311. It is just a beautiful blue. And here is my progress on that one. So I do have a page finish and I am onto the second page. I think I stopped off, yeah, I started doing the band, uh, this band here, and I decided to just start something else. Uh, it's really fun and it's so nice because you're stitching all in one color and I love the way it looks. I just think it'll look so good on my wall because I have a quite a lot of colors in my living room. We're in my living room now. Behind me is my bookcases, and I tend to organize them by color because I'll probably add a segment talking more about books at the very end. So we'll get into that when we get into that. But yeah, I love this. It's so pretty. And this I'm actually stitching with quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of thread. This I'm doing three over one of the Ada's because I'm using, I'm stitching this on, I think 22 count Ada. I honestly can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's 22 count Ada though. Let me just fold this where the stitches are on the inside. And I really like that. And this was another one um, inside one of those Amazon bags. I've yet to find cross stitching project bags that I'm obsessed with to the point where I want to spend that $25, which is funny because we say that, you know, you spend $300 to kit up a couple of projects and then you're like, do I want to spend $20 on it, <laughs> you know? Uh, so it is kind of funny, but I want to show you guys this. This is one of the other things that I bought at Hobby Lobby. This is a magnetic board and I don't want to show you the other side because it has my pattern on it, but it just has these magnetic strips on it. And this I really do like for the long dog because I am stitching it all in one color. It's easier for me to follow along when I'm using those little, uh, the little magnets. I don't know. I guess it's a, a strip a magnet strip. It's easy for me to trace this down as I go. And so that works out really nicely. So those are my cross stitching whips right now. I am just obsessed. I have ordered a few more things 
and then my birthday is next month and I'm trying to decide if I want to kit up two projects that I really love that I have in my cart from one, two, three stitch, or if I want to go back to the Thread Needle Street and she sells my like, my unicorn project. It's not really a unicorn because it's not hard to find. It's still in print, but it is the unicorn tapestry. It's the maiden and the unicorn and she's holding a mirror and the unicorn's next to her. I am obsessed with that. That was like the first tapestry weaving that I saw that I thought, oh my God, I want that on my wall. And I love the way it looks. It really goes with like the quirky, colorful aesthetic that I like. I really like modern looking things mixed with vintage. So like that's why I think I like the sampler so much because I can get a really fun quirky frame and match that with something that's, you know, antique like that 1791 sampler that I'm stitching on right now. You know, I feel like it's a piece of history and I'm kind of like weaving together this modern and old and I like that. I like the style. So that's it for cross stitching this week. That's all you stuck around for. Thank you so much. I hope to catch you again, you know, in the next couple weeks here when I can find time to record, but I'm just gonna hop right into knitting. And for starters, I'll go with what I'm wearing. So right now I'm wearing, this is knit out of Holst Super Soft in the colorway Sweet Pea. And it's just a basic triangle um, shawl. It's cast on three and then increase on one side and then go straight on the other. That's literally it, so nice and easy knit. My other project that I have on the, well, I guess it's not really on needles because I just need to pick up stitches and knit some more on it and it'll be done. But this is a Petite Knits No Frills sweater and I knit this on Chowgu Interchangeables with the call for needle sizes and I have completed one sleeve and I just need to pick up the stitches for the second sleeve and knit that and this will be complete. I kind of want to make this my Easter sweater, but because I've just had a mojo for cross stitch lately, I haven't picked it up again, but you know, I'll get there when I feel like it. I kind of go in waves. Um, I'll have like a month where I just cross stitch solely and then I'll have two months where I just knit completely. So this kind of depends on how I feel and I like going with the flow on that because crafting is supposed to be enjoyable. This is knit with uh, Trilogy Fiber Arts in the colorway cactus flower yeah cactus flower and it is her fluff base which she sadly has discontinued but I think she's replaced it with a surrey alpaca base so I don't know if you can get the same colorway but I know she's replaced the base at least and then I held it double with capretta and capretta is just a knit picks uh cashmere nylon wool blend so so soft I think it'll be a great Easter sweater like I said just a good springtime and because I live in Washington, spring is cold. So you would think to yourself like, oh, why would you need a mohair sweater in spring? Well, come to Washington. <laughs> the only downside is there's so much rain that it is kind of hard to wear mohair when there's so much rain. I'm hoping I don't get fluff all over my face now. And then I did have the little ball of it because I want to show you. It looks so different. I don't know, maybe it doesn't to you, but I think it looks so different in the ball. It's so pretty, I just love it. Um, I wasn't sure if I was obsessed with it at first because I actually, purple's my least favorite color. I like pinks and more muted colors or blues when it comes to my wardrobe, but I don't really wear purple. I don't think I own anything purple, but yeah, something about this. It went on sale when she was um, de-stashing all that because she got rid of the base and I don't know, I just liked it. I think it's those gold rusty bits in there. I love that color, so. And then, of course I say I love that color and I, pick up a rust colored sweater. So this I'm knitting with Eco Wool and this is, I think the colorway Rust or no, it's the colorway Cinnamon. And oh my goodness, when I tell you this has just the most beautiful variegation in the color. I don't know how well it'll pick up on camera, but hopefully you can see it. It's just stunning. There's like burnt orange, red, pink, yellow. It's so beautiful. And I actually don't remember the name of this pattern, but if you find me on Ravelry, which I know not everyone uses Ravelry anymore, but it is Mama Made VM, and this pattern will be in my library. It's kind of like that, there's a really popular Trista. Gosh, I can't remember for the life of me. I've been out of knitting for like a month now, so haven't really picked up the pattern in a minute. But all I have left on this is to just finish off the bottom ribbing and then sleeves. So. I almost have two sweaters finished, which is awesome. I probably won't wear this one until next winter because it is a more rustic knit, but it is pretty lightweight and I really love the wool, very soft. I think it'll be great with a lot of my slacks for work. 
I don't know. I've just kind of been in a mood to stitch and not knitting. And like always, because I'm obsessed with Chow Goo needles, I only have Chow Goo's. So, you know, if you want my recommendation for needles, Chow Goo's it is. I love them. I've tried a few different kinds, Knitter's Prides, all those, but all the popular quote unquote brands, I would say I've tried. And these are just my favorite. I love Chow Goo's. Um, it's the cord mixed with the cables. I just, I love it. The join is nice and smooth. Everything about them is great. But yeah, I'm just knitting this with the called for needle sizes, everything like that, and just knitting away. And then in here I have a cable needle because I still use a cable needle even for the small cables that go down the side of it. That's one thing I loved about this is that the cables that are displayed in the upper yoke actually uh, transition down the bottom of the sweater. And I thought, that that is beautiful. I love it. So those tiny little attentions to detail is just what gets me. So. That is all my knitting currently. I do have a couple other whips when it comes to knitting projects that are kind of long languishing. And I keep those stashed away in my knitting, like my yarn storage. And then I also have a few whips for cross stitch that I guess I should say they're kitted up. Sorry, I got that fluff all over. I regret picking that sweater up. <laughs> but I have a few other cross stitch kits that I already have everything for and they're in those Amazon bags, just like they were with those projects that I'm starting on. And I just wanna start them all, <laughs> but I have to resist. I need to focus on a project or at least pick one to focus on for a while and keep with it. So I think I'll alternate the three projects that I have currently going. And then when I feel like knitting, I'll just knit for the time that I feel like knitting. Um, and then as far as my books go, we'll just transition into that. I am currently reading um, Henry VIII's Last Days, and that's just a book about King Henry VIII, which was the ruler of England. He was king of England. And it talks about pretty much the end of his reign and those final moments when it was transitioning from him to his son, Edward. And it's really good so far. I really like the writer's style. He. I don't know if he speaks eloquently because I've never really watched a video of him actually speaking, but his writing style is very beautiful. So easy to read, really fun. I actually read mostly history. All of my books are nonfiction. I mean, there's a very small, small portion of my books that are fiction, but that's typically usually fantasy or um, like a romance, things like that, like more fluffy, lighthearted stuff. And so I'm reading that right now and I really love it. But that's what I was saying about my books is I don't need to organize them by genre because 98% of them are nonfiction and most of them have to do based in history or some kind of fiber art, whether it be knitting or fabrics or whatever it is. So I organize by color. Um, I like the way it looks. I have to live with all of these books in my home. So I do want them to look nice. I know that that's not every bookish person's uh, theory of how they store them, but this is my home, so I will store them how I how I please. And that's what I'm reading now. I really like it, I recommend it. Um, it's by Robert, Robert Hutchins, Hutchinson, sorry. I didn't actually grab it, it's in my bag for work, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't grab it before I sat down, didn't even think about it, but that's, that's all for today. I'm gonna go and sit down and start stitching and watch some, uh, the Virginia Stitcher. I love her. Her name's Vicki. If you are looking for a good floss tube recommendation, I recommend her. I've been watching her a lot. So yeah, I'm gonna go sit down and stitch away while my daughter's napping. But hey, hope you enjoy and I'll catch you all around. Have a good one. Bye.